Hey, this is Philip from Seaston Motor Co. and we're back with another update video about our mini pickup truck. Uh, this video is brought to you by Skillshare and we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but for now let's get into talking about the truck. And the first major update is the engine. This is a D16 Y8 engine. We really like the D16Y8s because they are the most powerful D16 engine that you can get. Um, and they're also a little bit newer than the D16Z6 that came before it. Uh, this means it's a little bit easier to find them. Uh, they're a little bit better taken care of usually just because they're that much newer. Um, and uh, it's an awesome engine. Fits great in the Mini. But like anything um, custom like this, even though it's a kit with a subframe, there's always a bit of massaging uh, and a little bit of work in order to make it sit really nicely so we can go over uh, a little bit about that process with you. Uh, first I want to talk a little bit about the actual engine itself. So for this car, because this car is going to be somewhat of a daily driver, a commuter car, we didn't want to do anything too crazy with the engine. Uh, so for that we have done a completely stock rebuild of the engine. That being said, uh, the tolerances in which we have rebuilt this um, even exceed Honda's tolerances. So our engine builder, Ocean, who did this for us, um, builds race car engines for his day job. Um, and this engine, when it was taken apart, everything was measured and mic'd and uh, put back together with the highest quality components. It's got molly bearings. It's got all OEM uh, piston rings and, and it's done really, really well. So this engine will serve the new owner for many, many, many years to come uh, and be as reliable, if not more reliable than when it was brand new in a Civic. So that's one of the biggest advantages of when you do a swap like this, you get rid of all of that, uh, that A-series temperamentalness, shall we call it, and, uh, and obviously the associated wiring that comes with that. So you get a really bulletproof engine, runs great. You can actually just use it like a car. So for this particular engine, um, we wanted to keep it looking somewhat like it belonged in this truck because we're going for the old school look with the wood paneling on the back. Uh, and it is a Mark one with external hinges and whatnot. If you open the hood and it looked like a blingy new Honda engine, there's something um, a little bit doesn't match for us aesthetically. Um, so what we decided to do is to keep it looking as much as possible like the A-Series that it replaces. So in order to do that, um, we ground off all of the Honda uh, emblems off the valve cover, and then we had the valve cover uh, sandblasted and then nickel plated. So this gave it this um, kind of very warm, lustrous, uh, gold and silver look that is reminiscent of the chrome valve covers that came on minis. But again, a little bit, little bit different, a little bit nicer. Um, it's really easy to clean if oil spills on it and, and whatnot, and it'll last and look awesome like this. And then for the, uh, the block and the transmission, uh, we went and got some paint mixed up. That's the exact color code of the um, original mini uh, engines and transmissions, and we painted it with that. So uh, at first look, at least it is paying an homage to the engine that was originally in there. Um, obviously we've got some other things uh, like, you know, the, the intake manifold here is aluminum um, with this kind of sandblasted finish, similar to you would get with, um, with a, you know, a performance intake manifold for an A-series. And then for the radiator that's tucked over here, this is an aluminum rad, but again, to try to kind of keep it a little bit more classic, we painted it uh, black with the kind of copper uh, fins to make it look, again, a little bit more um, of the era. Um, so in order to get the engine in here, um, there is a fair amount of cutting that's required. Um, we kind of detailed that before, you have to cut out the inner wings. Uh, there's a little bit of trimming along the front here uh, to make things like the, uh, the slave cylinder fit. And then the subframe itself, uh, it sits very, very uh, tightly in that subframe. So when we first put the engine in, it was contacting on the, fruit, the two uh, front points of the subframe here. So there is a rear engine steady that goes kind of in behind here. Um, and that we modified and, and leaned the engine back just a hair in order to clear that front bit because the worst thing is you don't want to have any sort of contact between the engine uh, and the subframe or the engine and the body. Because you got to remember too that the engine moves uh, as it's under, under load. When you torque it up, it'll move back and forth. Um, 
And if you do have any contact there, it's going to be a really loud buzzing noise because you're going to go from something that is uh, isolated with rubber, or in this case polyurethane, um, to straight on contact and it's going to be really noisy and take away uh, the, the end result that you're trying to get from using a Honda engine in Mini, which is a nice, smooth, easy, quiet uh, running engine. So. We did that, we modified the rear mount and that got everything sitting really nice. And from there we could attach our intake manifold. This uh, is an old stock Elderbrock intake manifold um, that was modified um, down inside here to lean it up so that it comes away from the firewall so you can fit it in. And usually that is enough uh, to fit these onto, uh, onto a Mini. However, in this case, uh, because of the way that it's positioned and because this is a Mark I with these early hinges that come down here close, uh, the cross bracing of the hood was just grazing the top here. So what we ended up doing is cutting it off here, welding a new piece onto the, uh, to the manifold, smoothing it out and then hitting it with a sandblaster to kind of even out the surface a little bit. Um, gives a cool look and now it fits great. Um, these are examples of some of the things that you need to do, although it is a kind of bolt-in kit, uh, there's always a little bit of tweaking uh, to make it work. So we've done that. Uh, the alternator setup uh, on the side here, we're using the mount that comes with the kit, but because of this car's need to have a bigger alternator, because it is running the electric air conditioning, we do have to modify that mount so that we could fit a 145 amp alternator uh, tucked up inner, in the inner fender right here. And that should be enough. Uh, amperage to supply for the electric AC. Um, I'll kind of hold off there and we'll go over a little bit more of the peripherals uh, and what we had to do to kind of make this work and where we're currently at with it. Uh, but first, let's take a moment and I just want to talk to you a little bit more about the sponsor for today's video, which is Skillshare. So if you aren't familiar with Skillshare, it's an online learning community with thousands of online courses for creatives like us. Uh, with Skillshare, you get to take as many courses as you want, and with each course lasting usually less than 60 minutes, it's much easier to fit into your schedule uh, rather than a conventional education system. If you've got skills that you are looking at getting better at or new things that you want to learn, then Skillshare is definitely something to check out. If you like the video production and uh, the stuff that we do here on the channel, then in many ways you have Skillshare to thank. Uh, we've taken lots of courses through Skillshare and we've learned a ton about uh, photo and video, marketing, editing, all of these things uh, through Skillshare. Uh, and you can do the same if you have an up and coming YouTube channel like we do. Uh, it's a great avenue uh, to learn new things about the craft. A recent course that just came out that we really enjoyed was one by Marcus Brownlee. He does a lot of tech videos. You probably recognize him from YouTube. Uh, he's got a course out right now talking a lot about video production uh, and it's something that's been really invaluable to us. If you have any interest in doing video production or YouTubing yourself, uh, definitely I would check that one out. After you're done with this video, make sure to scroll down into the description below. We'll have a link there. Uh, click that link. First thousand people will get a free trial access to the Skillshare's premium uh, package that will give you access to all the different courses you'd like to take. So sign up, take a look around. I'm sure uh, you will find it a really valuable resource uh, for anything that you're looking to do creatively. Uh, I know that we have enjoyed it a lot uh, and I hope that we can share that with you. So I was going to talk a little bit more about kind of the peripherals of what makes the engine work. Um, so starting off in the corner here, we have uh, the radiator. Uh, this is a pretty tight fit to get in here. This is the radiator used for uh, a Civic of the same generation. Uh, the Civics came with uh, usually a larger rad, but you can also get um, the small race radiator and that's what this is. So it's, it, it fits well in there, but it's tight. So in order to make sure that we didn't have any vibrations like I was talking about earlier, uh, it's mounted in three spots. So we've got a mount along the bottom of the rad that we made that attaches to the um, subframe uh, mount that's right here. Um, so that kind of supports the radiator um, and positions it slightly at an angle so that it both uh, clears the distributor here and clears the back of the headlight bucket on the, on the inside of the fender. And then to stabilize the radiator uh, side to side and front to back, we've got two uh, threaded uh, rods here with heim joints on the end that are connected to the little threaded pieces that normally hold the radiator shroud. So the first one goes here and goes into the, uh, the threaded piece that's on the valve cover and this stops the radiator from going side to side. And then 
kind of hard to see, but tucked in the back here, we've got another one that attaches uh, back here to the firewall. And this prevents the radiator going uh, forwards and backwards. Small details, but this takes a little bit of time uh, to get just right because we are working with such tight tolerances here. Um, but we end up with a radiator that is not touching anything. It's free floating uh, and it shouldn't have any weird vibrations um, or, or kind of resonance through it um, uh, because of these adjustable pieces here. Uh, on the back side of the rad, we've got a fan, uh, electric uh, 10 inch fan that's hooked up. Um, and then, uh, then let's go over to the uh, distributor right here. A small detail that we want to talk about is with the electrical system on these cars, uh, it is important to be mindful of what generation engine and what generation wiring you're using. Uh, we've got a little bit of a Frankenstein um, motor going on here because what we've got is we've got an OBD1 computer, that's a P28, running a Honda ECU, so it's tunable. We've got an OBD1 harness uh, that we've had in stock, but we've got an OBD2 engine. And what that means is that not all the plugs connect, uh, but you can work with this. So what we've done is uh, in a situation like the distributor where the plugs uh, don't, uh, don't connect between the OBD1 harness and the OBD2 engine, we have bought an OBD1 distributor taken it apart, taken all the guts out, and put them inside the OBD2 housing. That way, we've got the plugs that work with the harness, and we've got the distributor that bolts to the engine. There's a couple of details like this, and if you are going to be swapping between different generations of Honda engines, uh, you want to be mindful of that. Things like the injectors changed, throttle position sensors, intake air temperature sensors, they're all very specific to the years that they come out with. Uh, and they're flexible enough to be moved around, kind of like we're doing. Small details like that, but that kind of stuff takes time. Uh, we also had to run OBD1 injectors uh, and, then, uh, and then things like the air intake temperature sensors and, and, and whatnot for the throttle body. So, made it work. Um, it's, it's one of those small details, again, um, that you got to think about when you're doing a swap like this. Um, so we go ahead and done that. Uh, distributor's plugged in. We've got all new plug leads and whatnot. Uh, alternator, like I talked about, we put in a 145 amp alternator so that it's enough to charge uh, the, uh, the electric air conditioning system that we've got. And then finally, um, the only thing we really have left to do here is the exhaust manifold. Uh, still waiting on that. That's going to be uh, a custom piece we're going to modify so that it fits really tight in here. And we can get, once we get the grill on and we've got spotlights coming from the outside, this will look completely stock. You'll have no idea uh, what lies beneath. Uh, the other detail that we've got currently on this um, is the shifter. Uh, we made up the shifter. With the way that this engine is mounted and how solidly it is mounted in the sense where um, uh, it's got 65A uh, poly mounts in it, so enough to take out the vibration, but it doesn't mean that the engine's gonna be rocking back and forth simply because we don't have the room to allow that. It also means that for the shifter linkage, you don't need the stabilizer rod. Normally on a, uh, on a Honda engine, when the engine rocks back and forth, there's a stabilizer rod that's connected to the shifter uh, housing. And what it does is when the engine rocks forward, it pulls the shifter with it so that your uh, shifting is not, um, is not separated from the movement of the engine. So it all moves as one so that you have precise shifting, but because we don't have the engine moving back and forth nearly as much, we can do away with that rod, which really helps uh, with getting clearance for running the exhaust system. So what we've done is we've got the stock uh, shifter housing and we welded a little piece to it so that it is permanently uh, hard mounted to the underside of the, uh, of the car. And then all we had to do is make one rod that goes to the, uh, to the actual shifter. Um, we then modified a Honda shifter uh, and welded it to a mini shifter. So from the inside of the car, it looks like a factory mini shifter. We've got one of our uh, SMCO shift knobs on there. Looks really nice, fits with the interior uh, and shifts great. We took a lot of time to make sure that everything was aligned uh, properly so that despite having these kind of oversized cushy seats, the shifter wasn't running into your leg or running into the seat. Uh, we got into all five gears in reverse without touching either of the seats. And that took a little bit of time, one person in the car aligning it while we made marks. And then when we finally welded it, we knew that it was gonna um, shift really nice and clear everything.
So that's it for our update on this video here for the truck. Uh, stay tuned for the next video where we'll have it running. Uh, if you like this long form uh, the content where we're showing you kind of the ins and outs please let us know in the comments make sure to like and subscribe uh, we want to share more of these builds we've got another exciting one coming up next uh, so make sure stay tuned for that uh, hit the bell notification so you get notified when we've got new videos out uh, thanks again for skillshare for sponsoring the video make sure to check out the link uh, it's a really really cool program and i'm sure you'll enjoy it and if you are interested in having a D-Series engine uh, swap done to your Mini, let us know in an email, uh, stevesmotorco.com. We've got a whole bunch of different products there. We've got t-shirts, we've got shirts, we've got uh, products for your Mini. And if you email us, we can talk to you about doing a build for you. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next video.